Então, muito bom dia a todos. O uh, meu nome é Tiago Ferreira, da Passio Consulting. Uh, espero que se encontrem todos bem de saúde e os vossos também. E bem-vindos aqui ao nosso webinar Auto Implementa Data Strategy com, com o Rafael Campos. Uh, o webinar de hoje uh, vai tocar aqui em temas que nós, enquanto consultores, acreditamos que são bastante importantes para as organizações. Vamos falar de, do conceito do Data as a Asset, vamos falar também de Data Strategy, vamos falar de que casos uso e que valor é que vamos ter com esses casos uso. Vamos também tocar num tópico muito correlacionado com, estas, com os temas da estratégia, que é o tema do Governance, e como também depois vamos ver ao longo da exposição, todo o tema dos KPIs, porque se nós não medirmos, não podemos controlar. O papel do Chief Data Officer uh, e a sua importância, e portanto vai ser um, um webinar essencialmente à volta uh, destes temas. Hoje connosco está o Rafael. O Rafael é PhD em, em Económico e tem um degree em Business Administration e um Master em Financial. Atualmente... Uh, tem mais de 20 anos de experiência e é atualmente o Chief Data Officer do Bankia e também o Presidente do Clube do Chief Data Officer em Espanha e na América Latina. O Rafael uh, fez no ano passado, em novembro, com um colega, um livro muito interessante, que é este livro, que conseguem ver, que é O Valor do Dado. O livro para já está só em castelhano, mas em todo o caso aconselho porque é realmente muito interessante, sendo certo que estará disponível em inglês no final do ano. Para quem quiser saber mais informações sobre o livro, pode inclusivamente visitar este website, valordeldato.es, onde tem aqui um, uma pequena e grande explicação do, do, sobre o livro, uh, e se quem quiser eventualmente encomendar, pode também fazer na Amazon de Espanha, que eles fazem entregas para Portugal uh, sobre este livro. Alguns temas que eu considero pertinentes, o livro é muito, muito interessante, eu já tive a oportunidade de, de o ler, alguns temas que eu considero pertinentes e gostava de realçar. Uh, um dos temas é valor de mercado e valor interno, outro tema é o valor potencial dos dados, Gostava também de salientar um, um tema muito importante, cada vez muito uh, uh, alinhado com os conceitos das, de desenvolvimento ágil, com os conceitos de data fabric, que é o tema de reutilização dos dados, também muito, muito importante. Outro, outros itens que gostaria uh, de chamar a atenção é todo o capítulo 6, que é a conversão monetária do valor dos dados, bem como um capítulo também muito interessante, muito interessante, o capítulo 7, com a aplicação prática uh, do valor interno dos dados da organização. Uh, e depois está inclusivamente, que claramente é uma grande mais-valia, toda esta componente de, uh, de fórmulas para poder ajudar a organização, de melhores práticas, uh, sobre todo este tema. Portanto, aconselho claramente... Uh, uh, que dei uma, uma vista de olhos no site anterior, como eu tinha dito, e uh, se acharem claramente interessante, depois poderão entrar em contato com o próprio Rafael. Thank you everybody for being here and thank you Tiago for your invitation. Um, I'm glad to be here with all of you. We're going to talk about today about uh, two main concepts uh, that are linked, very, very, very linked here, actually. That's data strategy and value, okay? Because value in every form is the way to, uh, it's the, the target of data strategy or, or it should be the target for a data a sound data strategy. <clears throat> because we, we all talk, say that data is an asset, but it's really data treated 
as an asset in our uh, balance sheets and so on, where you can see the main companies in terms of capitalization, the four main companies, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, which is the matrix of Google, as you all know, and with those price earning ratios that are really the envy of <laughs> at least of banking sector in, in Spain, those price earning ratios, which are so high. And, uh, and all those companies are known as being uh, the sound data managers. So data brings value to our companies, but we still uh, have not uh, begun to measure it and to include it uh, in our uh, accounting systems. And what's a strategy? Well, to me, a strategy is just, yes, okay, a purpose uh, with a plan, okay? But first, we need to, um, uh, to find our purpose in terms of KPIs or in terms of main indicators. And then we have to establish a plan to get to those, uh, to comply with the purpose probably in three steps and I would like to uh, I would like you to accompany me to in this journey from the first step which is where we are all involved in which is to use our data to comply with our strategy to use data to help um, um, the compliance of our strategy but the second step which almost nobody is uh, practicing, is uh, having a real and global data strategy. And the third one is that when you uh, have the, the maturity, maturity enough, then you uh, can use your eventually your data to even change your strategy, to even change your business model. But first of all, I'd like to ask you some questions. One of them is, uh, if you really know you that or all of you, I suppose you manage data, and uh, I would like to know whether you know what, which are your most relevant data, not in terms of subjective opinions or whatever, but in, in a data-driven decision, do you have KPIs to find which are your most relevant data and uh, which informational assets? When I, when I talk about informational assets, I'm talking about data, talking about dashboards, reports, data sets, even models, okay, any, any informational assets, which are the least useful. And another one that we all should be thinking about is what's the fair value to be paid to my customers for the use of their personal data. We should all be thinking about that because you know privacy issues is the, something that's really concerning uh, society more and more every year. And uh, we'll, we'll get, we are getting to a point that we will have to begin to pay our customer for the use of their data, to get their, their consent to use them. And probably the second, the second one of this slide is if you uh, probably have become a data diogenes, you know, there's the God that, uh, gathered all the all the garbage and stored all the all the garbage because you know <clears throat> having a big data is like having a sealer okay that's having a store that as it is so cheap to store uh, data we we have a, 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 a big big confusion sometimes and uh, this question I wonder whether you have ever asked if you have the suspicion that your strategy is not ready for the data you manage. I'm not talking about that your uh, data is prepared for your strategy that that's where all involved in, but is your strategy linked or unlinked, okay, or disconnected from your, from your data? And well, if you are managers, are you really prepared for the challenges of digitalization? And the last one, have you ever wondered about the contribution of your job as data managers to your company and the shareholders? I mean, what's the effect of your data management to the value of the company? That's something that, uh, that uh, the, the value of data may help you. 
the, the idea, the data value chain is it's really very, very simple. Okay, we, we collect data, we collect data to be used, and we use it to get value. But uh, in this configuration, it, it, it sounds simple, but let's uh, analyze it, let's put a zoom on that. Data, and with this is uh, the, the formula that uh, in, uh, in, in my book is all, all around this formula, is that data is, can, can be uh, disaggregated uh, in two. It can be breaking, broken into volume of data and the quality of data. And the use cases okay, can be divided to disaggregated into the number of use cases and the utility of the use cases. I mean, utility is for the use cases as quality is for the volume of data. And the, the fifth one, the last one, is the connection between the use cases and your strategy. This is the strategic relevance that we, what we call. So we have three links here. One is the capture of data, the collection of all data, the lineage that gives you those governance uh, tools, uh, market governance tools that may help you find the connection between data and the use cases. But the last one, the strategic relevance, it doesn't depend on technology. It depends on the definition of your purpose, on the definition of your strategy. Because technology may help you in those last line, it, it, it has changed the way we store it, the way we transform data, the way we use and consume data. But technology is not going to help us in the definition of our purpose and in the connection between our purpose and our use cases. And probably you all be well, or probably I don't know, Tiago, whether you're wondering where governance is all around here. Okay, what's the importance of data governance in all these uh, value chain? So, um, in fact, data governance is in the art of all information management disciplines. So, uh, if you have uh, data quality management, the governance is there. If you are talking about data warehouse, BI, machine learning, System. Uh, if you are talking about reference data, master data, metadata, security, so in fact data governance is in the art of all disciplines, so it's very, very important. This, this image of Gartner and Forrester, so the, the top 10 in Gartner data analytics trends and also in Forrester's top technology trends to, to watch in this year and beyond. And you can see, I will not talk about all of that, but you can see here that all of them, or most of them, uh, and I think this is one of them is very important, the number seven of Gartner data analytics as a core business function, but also all of them have a single point that is master data. Concerning the issues that we see in the, in the project, uh, many of them are Typically, most of the organizations don't, don't have appropriate data models. Uh, they are not linked if they are in place for the process models. Business glossary is very important because uh, it's here that you put the definitions that were defined and committed with all stakeholders. Also is important in a more technical point of view, the data dictionary, and of course, uh, because people is the people that are governing this data, responsibility, skills, competencies is very important, and also uh, data quality metrics and also regulatory metrics for measures and process. Uh, this is the main points that we see in some projects that uh, have to improve for the achievement of a better data management slash data governance. Um, uh, maturity and also to be enabled to this kind of new digitalizing that the, the organization is taking care of right now. Okay, when well, we were talking about the value chain, the data value chain, and we were talking about all those five steps uh, volume, quality, use cases, utility, and, uh, and the relevance, uh, the, the strategic relevance to generate value. But let's change it into a pyramid. 
Okay, what's the this pyramid in the in the peak of the pyramid? There you have the value. Okay, now we're going to talk about value, but we have to generate value, and we have to find out what which use cases help us generating this value. And after that, then we have to find um, the data that's going to be used in these use cases. And at the end of this all this uh, process, we have to find out what's the best governance model. And here it is, the governance models. And after that, the last one, we have to think of the technology needed to do that. But what's value? I mean, it's, I'm, 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 uh, I'm following the classification of the business, the American Business Roundtable, okay? But value is not only for the shareholders. <clears throat> You can generate value to for the employees or for the suppliers, for customer, and for the whole society. And that's the definition of your purpose. Brings value to any of all those uh, stakeholders in terms of increasing incomes, which is the typical. You can use, you may use data to increase incomes, or even to reduce expenses, to optimize all your processes and reduce expenses, but to mitigate risk, which is in, for example, in banking sector and insurance sector is quite important. And you can you can even <clears throat> improve the intangibles like um, I mean clients uh, satisfaction and so on. And that's a, the, the definition of the value. And the uses that different kinds of uses that from a reactive business consumption, then that's more advanced. It's like business analysis, and then you have to bring it to data discovery or even at advanced analytics, but it's the, it's the same. You, you use data, you use data to generate all this value. That's the, 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 the big connection that companies need. And data, <clears throat> okay, governance uh, cannot be uh, rigid or you, you, you cannot implement. Uh, it's not a best practice to implement uh, unique data governance. You may, you, you have to adapt your governance models <clears throat> depending on the distribution, depending on the kind or the type of data, and depending on the purpose of this, of this data. Okay, <clears throat> so this pyramid, and we have been talking about, uh, we have been talking before, brings uh, different sentences uh, and uh, some conclusions. So first of all, we have to uh, assume that strategy defines what value means for each company. And uh, we have to strategy brings the plan, okay, to achieve this uh, strategy. But the cases of use is just levers, sorry, not leverage, just levers to create value. And data is the raw material for cases of use. And then technology and governance are enablers, just enablers. It's not the the the, the target. It's not the purpose of the strategy. It's not. Uh, acquiring technology or even hiring talent. They're just neighbors. And governance, in this sense, governance can be defined as the way you organize people and technology around data value process with the goal of maximizing the value of the company. The thing is that technology always lights the spark of the innovation. Look how, how technology changed the way we use data in terms of all the steps of the journey, of the steps of the chain. Look at the internet of things, like the collection of open data strategies, how it had to change the storage with the cloud and big data and so on. <clears throat> the availability, look at virtualization or even federation. And in terms of the business intelligence, all those ma magic tools to with the data visualization and so on. And of course, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and all the algorithms. Okay. And it's had spring, it's had been brought by technology, but there's a there's a threat on that because we tend <clears throat> all every company tends to overweight technology and what happens when we overweight technology because it's the beginning of transformation and we tend to overweight it thing is that the majority of uh, 
budgets in artificial intelligence is destined to technology and the development of the of that uh, technology. And what happens with that? It happens that then a small part of the budgets are allocated for governance. Okay, let's talk about governance in terms of anything that's not technology. Okay, and uh, the thing is that if you do not allocate uh, a part of the budget for technology acceptance, or even if you don't um, um, allocate budget for data literacy, then it will uh, probably <clears throat> be, uh, you, have pro you will have problems to implement the, the strategy because strategy sometimes is designed as it is built when you overweight technology. You need to go from a technology to strategy value to go to a strategy first and the, to put the focus on business yeah, on, the, on the pyramid on the right side of the slide and you can see how the data uses are built that's bottom up but how you have to build how you have to design the strategy that's um, um, from top uh, top down a top down uh, <clears throat> focus so uh, at this Part of, in this part of the presentation, I have to talk about three uh, enemies, okay, of the data-driven company, which is, uh, of course, the first one. All those managers who have a gut-driven decision, okay, the intuitive uh, managers versus the data-driven managers. Then the, the the second enemy is the say the silos, okay, all the walls between departments. Uh, that's uh, the versus the cooperation <clears throat> and then all well, these ways new ways these new forms of work um, that's development from a rigid and risk aversion way of working to an adaptable and an agile experiment and at this point of the presentation i'd like to ask you um, to uh tiago if you have ever uh, found uh, cultural problems in any of your clients who uh, implement the data strategies. Here is the, the the golden one million question because culture is strategy for breakfast. And nevertheless, so this is important. Why? Because you can put uh, and you can have and you probably have this kind of experiences in your field also. You can have a good strategy, but if you are not Align if you are not involving people, you are not going to obtain the correct results for that. So, in governance, also people are the challenge. So, we have to uh, involve the people, work with people. Okay, like you say, technology is just a part, and the people effectively is the, the challenge. And uh, some things that uh, knocked out your strategy. Uh, if it was a governance, data governance strategy, a data strategy, whatever, is lack of business leadership and commitment. For example, uh, uh, giving people data responsibility, but not equipping them to be successful. Trying to do everything at the first stage, so going the ocean, and uh, putting in this in this data governance process, putting too much emphasis in data management, not in data improvement, like you said. Minutes ago, and uh, I think uh, some of the the things that uh, we see uh, is that really, really is important the communication, because it's a collaborative activity. So it's not only for IT; it's for all the business that works with data. Um, uh, it's a change of behaviors and people behaviors. And uh, uh, typically in our projects, we try to put in place uh, a very clear uh, data communication process, okay, and identify the case stakeholders and also uh, deploy use case that you can share uh, with all the teams to try to uh, piece by piece win and uh, buy in these, these things, uh, and also including using uh, some internal events, websites, and sites effects. Okay, let's go back to that formula where we have the data use cases and value. 
Okay, uh, let's come into, let's put an example of an insurance company. Imagine an insurance company that's focused on life insurance, okay? And they have a, <clears throat> a strategic plan that needs to uh, diversify income. So they have uh, found that probably they should um, diversify their incomes in terms of uh, in the household class of, of insurance and health class, okay? And uh, <clears throat> they found that the levers to doing that are two. I mean, they, are, they need to increase the policies, increase the contracts, okay? And uh, um, <clears throat> rise prices. But prices are very difficult to be risen because <clears throat> um, there's a fierce competence in the market. So they find out that they will probably need to increase the contracts. And there are three, three levels to increase the, the contracts. That's increasing penetration, okay, increasing the number of um, contracts that are uh, sold to their current customers <clears throat> or uh, capturing or engaging new customers to the company or even reducing the churning okay, of those customers that go uh, to go to another company. This is the, the strategic plan that they decide that they, they need data to help this uh, strategic plan. So <clears throat> then they go one step before and they find that they need to implement four different cases of use. <clears throat> For example, I recommend, I recommend a model Okay, for the current uh, clients, a churning model that gives you a warning whether a client is going to leave or not. <clears throat> they need better dashboard for sales rep to be able to, to sell to the to the correct customers the new the new um, the new policies and uh, data sets for self consumed for business analysis. And those they they, they have. They, they have connected all these use cases to any of the KPIs of the, of the, of the, of the strategy. <clears throat> and then the next step is going one step behind. And then they see the data. They already have their own data. And the data, the data of the group, as you have, there are big, big problems in terms of uh, integration with your own, the data of your, <clears throat> of your branches and an open data strategy, okay, and the external data. And then at the end of, of this uh, process, this thinking process, there comes which technology they need to implement and which talent they need to hire and the model of governance of all these processes. So that's, what's my, that's what my, <clears throat> the book is about. It is about, uh, building or designing designing a map like this one imagine in your company <clears throat> that you go to the, to the right side of the slide and then you have six different kpis which are very the, the the main important kpis for your company and then you have an inventory of all the cases of use i mean cdm is dashboard Okay, you have dashboard A, dashboard B, which have their utility. The utility in terms of what? The user satisfaction, predictability of the model. The, there are a lot of KPIs that may uh, be used to measure uh, utility, okay? Then you have data sets, and then you have anal analytics, analytics models, okay? Analytic models. And then uh, this, in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, you have the, the inventory of all your data, okay? Data one, data two, data three, with data quality, okay? Data quality may change in, in depending on the use, but okay, let's, let's simplify uh, that. And then if you have this, this, this map, you eventually could do that using a data governance tool to connect the data with the use cases and connect use cases with your strategy that's not a part of the technology. It's not, uh, that, 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 there's not technology to do in that. You have to do it by yourself, okay? And uh, then if you have this map, okay, you, you, you may begin with a small part, a small perimeter, okay? But if you, if you have this map, 
then you could find that the data number nine is not used at all. So it's really bringing confusion to your data lake. Or probably data set A, you see, is not used for any strategy KPI. And nobody wants to remove a data set. Nobody wants to remove, nobody dares to remove data because uh, maybe, maybe somebody may use it. And uh, you know, it. you always build, 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 but you never remove. <clears throat> Imagine that you change your strategy. That's something that's happened, for example, with COVID-19. We have to change our strategy. So <clears throat> now we are no longer going to for the KPI W and we are we have found a new KPI. Then we could know all the use cases that are not going to be used anymore and data that may be removed. And even imagine that you could rank all your KPIs and say that your most important KPIs, KPI W, then you could highlight the critical data process that you need to take care about. And then depending on these uh, critical uh, data and use cases, you may allocate more budget, not in terms of the intuition, not in terms of the power of the manager, but in terms of the value added of this data process to your company. And the most inspiring one, then you could find that you have enough data to move the sources of your income into another business model. It could happen. Imagine a bank, for example, all data that we know about, for example, data security or data privacy, we could move and some banks are doing it, are moving into new business um, based on the data they already have collected, okay? So the consequence of that is that in terms of if informational demand, okay, in terms of becoming a hub that decided which informational developments may be made or not, because the always budget is scarce, then you could prioritize Alternate, alternative actions using data valuation. And you could even budget allocation in the, in the necessary or in the most valuable cases of use and data. And even all the stakeholders could be engaged. Imagine a data owner that, that knows what's the value he or she is adding to the company. And of course, something that always happens that we have to convince our CEO about the value, how valuable is what we are doing for the company, and even to value it new business models. So knowing the, the value generated by my data even promotes cultural change, because cultural change is quite important for data strategy. We could talk about three different kinds of data strategy, the control data strategy, the optimization and transformation one. But to get to the transformation strategy, we have first to um, uh, step up the, the, the other two steps, okay? That depends on two uh, axes, okay? Data maturity, which is your current capabilities, your actual capabilities, and your data-driven ambition, which is what you want to be when you grow, okay? And then you have to first uh, pass through the no scalability zone into the maturity zone, and then going to the disruptive zone, okay? And uh, in all this process, uh, what's the role for the chief data officer or for the head of data or, or what well, it depends on the organization? We have to assume that uh, data strategy is a, cultural change strategy. So we shouldn't, uh, we, sh we should take into account that technology is the 
foundations, but it's not the purpose. It's not the end. It's just an enabler, okay? And this process requires a transformational leadership in terms of uh, showing the value of what we do of this strategy to the organization. So persuasion is one of the key factors for transformation and leadership and change, of course, to lead cultural change. And don't forget about ethics because it's going to be a very, very important issue in the next years because of the ethical consequences of data management. So <clears throat> I'd like to finish my presentation talking about some a little bit of pieces of advices, okay? It's the importance of communicate constantly that Tiago talked about that uh, before and uh, bring in new working methodologies, okay? Collaborative prototype and adaptive methodologies because if not, this waterfall methodologies brings a lot of frustration to the users, okay? It takes a lot of time and at the end of the development, then you find that that's really not worth it, okay? And uh, professionalized change management. It, I mean, it's allocating budget for change management. And change management, it's not only uh, training, okay? It's more than training, okay? Building a purpose, bringing incentives to, the, to all the stakeholders and allocating budget. <clears throat> and data literacy is not only important for the, the, the employees, very important starting from the board, okay? The executives have to receive training on data strategy because if not, strategy is always been, it's always going to be disconnected from data strategy. And, and this is a very, very big mistake, okay? It's important to have a, like a group of consultants, okay? Uh, internal consultants in the company, that's I call them discovering teams, okay? They seek for data opportunities because there are a lot of departments in the company that are really not data literate at all. And they really don't know how data may help them. That's the, that's the function of the discovering teams. And well, I know everything is very, very quick, very fast, everything goes very fast and we have to move fast. And we always talk about uh, moving rapidly, it's very important. And we sometimes forget about thinking and pause, reflection, thinking. Sometimes it's important that sometimes to think, to have to stop and think, because if not, we are running, 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 and then we get we get to, to nowhere, okay? And <clears throat> the last one is very important. Designing good, sound KPIs. It's very important. If they talk to you about an, a strategy, <clears throat> you better first ask them what's the KPIs that are going to be the, the way to measure the performance on the strategy. If you analyze the KPIs, then you really, you are going to discover where this strategy is going to end. Because, and, and the, the most important is making the company aware of the of data value and promote cooperation through the design of uh, sound uh, KPIs. always need to tend, we should tend to design our strategy in terms of a pulling one. Okay, it's the business who uh, defines the value, they define what they need. And then data managers and IT managers <clears throat> help uh, uh, getting to the point. But in some sectors, uh, the value is differently defined, okay? 
in the very regulated sectors, for example, like banking or insurance, sometimes the value is complying with some rules and regulations like risk data aggregation, for example, or, or basal uh, regulation in terms of capital. So the value for these companies may be first to comply with the regulation. It's a, it's a way of, of, of measuring value too. So it's better to have a, a pool strategy, but the definition of the value has to be very well uh, defined. It begins with some concept uh, about data strategy and uh, the formula that no, 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 it's not conceptual at all. It's quite concrete. We are proposing a methodology and then, and, and we even uh, bring an example in, in Excel's, okay, sheets, in Excel sheets uh, to apply the, the formula. I mean, <clears throat> uh, almost, uh, that, I mean, there, there are few, very few, few books that talk about data value. One of them, the, probably the first one that's been written is Infonomics, okay, from Doc Lani, which is really a fundamental book on data valuation. It's the first book ever written about that. But they propose six different ways to uh, value data, but it's very difficult to, 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 to implement them, okay? Our formula is not, I mean, I mean, probably it's difficult to implement if you really don't have an inventory of the data or you don't have an inventory of your use cases, but it's a formula that can be um, applied quite concrete with an example. And uh, we, we even have a, um, a web page, palordeldata.es, that we can, you, you can even ask our, our, our questions about the, the methodology, but we are really implementing this technology, we have implemented this technology for, for, a, for a part of the use cases at Bankia, and we are going to implement it in our new company, Kasha Bank. Well, it's like any other informational project. I think it's better to begin with a, with a small, okay? And then you may grow. Because if, if not, it's like Tiago said before, like boiling the ocean, okay? Boiling the ocean is not a good idea. Uh, so probably you better begin with, uh, with what you know. You will probably have some reports. You will probably have some data sets, even analytical models that you really know the traceability, you know the lineage from this from the data to the use cases, and you can make the exercise that's quite sound, okay, to connect all these use cases with your strategy in trying to measure the the impact, okay, of uh, of in, uh, of writing the KPIs in this strategy. Then if you begin with a small perimeter, then you will find out whether it works or not, okay. You can even tune it, tune it. Um, the month by month, okay? And then you can grow. Then you'll see how something changes in all the stakeholders in the, in the, in the data value chain, because they are going to know that, wow, that's what that thing that I was doing has really have an impact on the value of the company. And then you will find that it engages um, a lot of stakeholders that really didn't, were not connected to what, what to the purpose of what they were doing. But first, begin with a small perimeter. Show them the value. Um, okay, I don't, I don't know if you have seen, uh, you have watched um, a movie from Tom Cruise that this was a uh, uh, an agent, a sports agent, okay, that he's fired from his company, and he just gets one client. He has just the the last client, which is Cuba Movie Junior, and then this client says to him that if he wants to be, uh, 
his agent for the future, just show me the money. And he says, show me the money, show me the money, show me the money. Okay. And then uh, that's what you have to do. Show them the money, show them the value. Okay. Uh, quick wins have, need to be uh, very well uh, chosen. And uh, not only the, 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 the case of use, but the person you are, uh, you are uh, solving a problem because nobody is going to uh, believe in you because of your words. People is going to believe in you because of what you do. If you solve them a problem, they are going to believe in you. If you don't solve them a problem, you will you may talk that in three years we will have the best data lake data lake in Europe and but those are only words and we all know where words go. So uh, I think it's better to show them the money, okay? Like Jerry Maguire, the movie, okay? Thank The, the importance of in, in, in information on demand. Okay, information, the, the information on demand management, management is crucial because it's the connection between all the uh, domains of the data and the domains of the use cases. Um, the uh, information on demand needs to prioritize what's going to be done. And um, usually, it's going. It's it's been uh, the the criteria, okay, to prioritize informational demand or the informational assets that were going to be developed, was just a bureaucratic criteria, okay. We gave you one million euros, and then next year we have the shortcut that we have to cut cost, and then instead of one million, you have nine hundred thousand. And that's a, that's the bureaucracy criteria. Okay, I uh, encourage you to value the to get the value of every use case. It doesn't have to be the formula of data value, which maybe can be uh, um, difficult to implement. It's better to to get to that formula. But if not, at least simplify it by saying, okay, tell me the value for the company between one and 10, and then let's find out the costs of the, of, the, of the development. Because we are very good, very, very good at finding the cost of the things, but we are not good at finding the value of the things we develop. So begin by a, well, I was going to say a subjective KPI, but it's not, I mean, it's an oxymoron. It's, you know, KPI cannot be subjective, but try and, act, try and uh, get, as near as you can to the formula of the data valuation and, 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 and see what happens, see what happens. Okay, well, it depends on the company, of course, okay? Uh, but, um, I mean, it's better to be uh, in, the, in a position as, I mean, the nearer it is to the business, the better they will generate, help generating value, okay? Um, the CDO, depending on IT, um, it's going to be, to have a, mm, a different targets that have a collusion with business objectives, okay? And uh, business is a, a good path. Uh, of the of the of the company to be in, to be to be a chief data officer because as we talked before it's better a pool strategy I mean, the business uh, uh, pools from all the organization to get value from data but if not and, and it depends also in the maturity of the companies the companies that are very mature that probably all the all the areas all the members of the board of directors really know how to use data. They know how to take decisions based on data. They know how data may help them uh, reaching their targets. And then it, it can be a position depending on the CEO, okay? This is so transversal that it has to put in mind the value and put in mind all the, all the walls they have to 
uh, they have to ruin, okay? All the, all, all the silos, they have to break, to break down. So, but uh, IT is not a good idea. <laughs>